Today I'll be showing you how lists work. So, if you're familiar with variables, right? Variables store a valuable that you can change. So you can put in like 20, you can change it, you can also see what it says and put it into other values. Like I can see that this is variable is 20, and I could put it into other blocks, like move 20 steps. So I move 20 steps, I could change this to 10 steps, let's say. But lists allow you to store many variables all at once. So the way you make a list is let's, is you click make a list and you can type anything, I don't know, my list. And now you have a new list. So there's two ways you can add stuff to a list. You can click this little plus button and you can type stuff. So like let's say this is my shopping cart. I could add bananas. I could add apples. I could add um, eggs, and then I would have my shopping cart. Or you can delete this value. And so now if I click on this, like a variable, I can see apples, bananas, and eggs. But I can also access specific elements of it. So let's say I was a cat, and I wanted to read every element of my grocery list. So let's say okay, I have three elements. So I'm going to read all three, okay, or I could do this one at a time, but I can read, over here you have a block that says item one of my list, so if you click on this, it'll get the first element. So if I was a cat and I wanted to see the first element, I could do say item number one of my list. Now if I wanted to say every element of my list, you can use something called a for loop in programming it's called where you can iterate and loop over a bunch of elements. So the way you do that is you need to have a variable to keep track of which element you're on. So I'll create a variable, call it um, i for iterator, or just the standard what you call the variable i, I don't know why. But you put i inside of here, and if you set i to 1 at the beginning, and change it by 1 every time, it's going to start at 1, then it's going to say the item on the list, it's going to go to 2, it's going to say that item on the list, i is going to change, then it's going to be saying the third item. So now if I add a little wait block, now it'll say all the elements in the list. Bananas, apples, and eggs. But, let's say if I add another element, like um, bread, now it won't say all the elements, it'll only say bananas, apples, and eggs. So if I want that to happen, what I can do is there's another block that you can use called length. And this returns the length, so as you can see our length of our list is 4. If we put that here, now it'll always say the length of the list. And you can, yeah. But this is really useful, not just for saying all your ingredients on a list, but let's say you're making coins, and you, if you were having coins that were like dynamically generated, like you didn't want to have to create a new variable for every single coin, you didn't want to have to do coin 1 position x, coin 1 position y, coin 2, coin 3, coin 4, you'd have to create a new variable for every single coin. But with a list, what you can do is, I'm just going to delete this, I can create a list called coins x, okay, or I can create a list called coins y, and I can um, add a bunch of positions, I'll say like negative 50, and then maybe like 50, and then like 100, I don't know, and 30. Then I can add a bunch of positions here, so like 100, 45, um, negative 150, 100. So now I have a bunch of positions. These are the coins x, and so instead of having to create four separate variables for every single coin, now I have all these. And so let's say I choose a coin costume. Maybe I don't do a coin, maybe I do apples. So maybe these are going to be apples x and apples y. Um, doesn't matter, they're still coins. But 
I can loop over every single one. So, see in this one I said say hello. Well, instead of say, I can say, I can do, create a clone of myself. Okay? And instead of the item being a grocery cart item, it can be a position in this list. So, I can go to, remember, item I. So, get the first item, or whatever item we're on, of coins X. Then, get the f first item, or whatever item we're on, of coins Y. So now if you put this in here, it should create three positions of the apples. One here, one here, and one here. But, if we want to create four positions, we'd have to use the same trick from earlier. We have to get the length of all of them. So now we have this. And, see now we have four apples, or coins. Um, this can be useful just for anything that you don't... For anything like collectibles, or anything like that. Or you could keep track of high scores. So if you have like a list of high scores, you can have the first person, second person, third person, fourth person. It's really useful. Um, and yeah, that's basically what lists are.